What's happening guys? Welcome to another video. So today I'm going to be talking to you about my experience of minoxidil. Alright, so minoxidil is something that I've been using uh, probably on and off for about a good, I'd say 10 to 12 years probably. So it was, it was the first thing I sort of researched after, you know, saw Palmetto and Propecia uh, to try to actively regrow any hair that I've, I've basically lost. Um, so the version I'm currently using is a Regain Foam. It's probably something you've seen in the, super, uh, in the supermarket, at pharmacies, that type of thing. Um, but that wasn't basically the version that I've always taken. So I'm going to give you a little bit of history on uh, why it is I take that product and basically what I've used um, as other versions of Minoxidil in the past and my experience of doing so. So the first ever version of Minoxidil that I used was actually, uh, rather than a foam, it was the serum based version. Um, I bought it on the internet um, and it was by a brand called Kirkland Signature. Um, they're the one that you probably see actually when you go to like Costco and places like that. They tend to do a lot of generic products. Uh, anything from like, you know, tin foil and, you know, salt and pepper and anything you could think of, they tend to do it. Um, so I used their version of uh, Minoxidil as the first kind of uh, use of the product basically. Uh, so it's like I said, a topical solution. You had a little pipette um, and you used a one mil. Um, kind of drop of the product uh, both morning and night. So it was proven to kind of work at the crown better than the temple area. Um, so initially I tended to use it just at the kind of crown area at the top of my head, which is arguably where I needed a little bit more help anyway. So basically I used it for a good sort of six to nine months. Um, and within that period of time, I was using it alongside, um, you know, both generic and branded Propecia, um, so Finasteride. Um, and I, I saw, you know, a mild improvement in terms of, you know, the thickness and density of those areas in my hair. Um, what I'm going to sort of tell, talk you through is some of the various side effects. So I feel that obviously, you know, with the Propecia, um, there's lots of kind of negative side effects because it's uh, an oral uh, pill. It's something you ingest with into your system. Whereas obviously, you know, Minoxidil was a topical solution. Um, so I think they actually discovered it because I think it was for, um, for blood pressure. Um, and they noticed that a side effect was basically that a lot of the, uh, the patients were starting to grow hair. And um, so they obviously formulated it into like a liquid and obviously placed it, you know, on your actual skin itself. Um, so they again say it takes a good three months. I think this is due to just obviously the rate at which your hair grows. Uh, so it's slightly different for every single person and stuff, but on, on balance, it's going to take you a good three months for, you know, different phases of hair growth to, to occur in different areas of your scalp. So the, the Kirkland Signature version of the product that I had um, was, it was a fairly short lived experience. Like I said, it was about six to nine months. And the reason for it was that, you know, some of the side effects you get from it were almost unbearable. Um, so the product sort of works basically by creating more blood flow to the to the epidermis basically in your scalp So, you know, you're you're creating more blood flow to that area So there's more nutrients available to the hair follicles and therefore you're going to grow more hair um, So that's kind of just the process of how it works um, What I personally found was that, you know, when I would put it on at night Sometimes it would literally be so unbearably itchy that it would wake me up in the middle of the night and my head would be throbbing, my heart would be racing. There were actually quite a few different side effects that I experienced from the topical version of the product. Um, whether or not that was just the, the Kirkland version or whether it would be the same with you know the, the actual Regain version of it too, uh, it's difficult to say, um, but it was something that I really just could not handle. Um, you know, I was, I was waking up in the night and you'd really try to not kind of scratch your head and stuff like that, but it was almost unbearable to the point where you literally had to. And, you know, I felt like kind of tapping my head and stuff like that to try to, to ease the actual itching of it. Um, but what I found is that, you know, in the long term, that actually made it worse. Um, so I did use it at the crown and then I tested it also on like the temple area around here and stuff too. And obviously because it's improving blood flow to that area, the reason they tend to probably recommend the crown is because you can't see it. Whereas if you put it at the front of your hairline here, it's immediately noticeable. You know, and I had people saying, what's going on? Why is your head sort of red in that area if you've got sort of psoriasis or something like that? Um, and it would really dry out your scalp and sometimes get to the point where, you know, it'd basically be sort of, you know, it sounds gross, but like flaking and things like that. Um, my partner was not really a fan of me taking that. It looked, it looked gross. Um, so I stopped it basically. Um, so 
with that version, literally there was you know times when it was almost basically your scalp was bleeding and stuff, which is obviously not something that you can do long term. You you can't really live your life that way, right? Um, as as painful as hair loss is, that was a lot more painful basically. Um, so the next version of the product that I tried, I thought perhaps it's just obviously the uh, the Minoxidil uh, Kirkland Sigma generic version that is the problem. Uh, let me try a different brand. Um, so I went on to, I think it was a website at the time called Look Fantastic, and they, it's just a cosmetics website, they had tons of other stuff. I think I've purchased things from them before, like you know um, lab series things and Dermalogica and stuff like that. Um, and I found that there was a, a brand called DS Labs, uh, which did both a 2% version, I think it was geared towards kind of females, they did a 5% topical spray, and then they even actually did a 12% cream that you could buy as well, but I think that that was discontinued very quickly and probably for obvious reasons. So I purchased the uh, the five percent spray, which is kind of the equivalent of uh, the generic uh, Kirkland signature minoxidil I had previously. Um, so I used that for that three month period, um, but again, it was just it was impossible to take for one simple reason, right? So you'd spray it, and it was yellow. So literally, it would turn your hair and your scalp yellow, and you know it actually said you could use it on all areas of your head, um, but I remember so many occasions where, you know, I had it on my temple area and up at the, the top of my uh, my forehead here and stuff. And people would be like, are you okay? What, what's that on your head? Like, why is it yellow? Um, and I had to kind of come up with various different excuses. I think one time I said it was like a spray plaster and stuff like that. Um, again, it's not really a way in which you can live your life day to day. You know, if, you, if you've got an active lifestyle and you're training or whatever and exercising, then it's just... So it's not feasible for you to go around doing that uh, with you know yellow head basically um you know if you've got you know a relatively serious job where you're you know in contact with various different people throughout the day and stuff again totally uh, totally unfeasible for you to have that on your head basically right so once i stopped using that um i had probably a period of maybe about two to three years where i literally didn't use it at all um and then it was partly because i'd had so many bad side effects from using it i thought well is maybe it's just not for me, you know, or maybe my scalp's too sensitive, or um, you know, maybe just there's not a product that's going to actually work for me. Um, and so, like I said, I had a few years off from taking it and stuff. Um, what I then actually did was I think they had a regain foam, like a really cheap offer. They had like three bottles for thirty pounds or something on Amazon, and I'd read good reviews about it, and I was thinking, well, I mean, there must be a reason that they made the foam, basically, because why would you have the same product with two different variations of it and it's so similar, you know? And I think at the time they were kind of phasing out the actual solution version of the product as well. Um, and so basically I purchased the Regain Foam and I'm not entirely certain what the reasoning behind it was, whether it was just there was a lot more alcohol in the serum version or whatever it might have been, but I literally get no side effects from taking it. So I use it on my crown. You can use it on your temples and stuff too, but I personally don't. I only use it on my crown. Um, on a very, very, very rare occasion, if you put it on your crown and say you go outside and it's very hot and sunny, so like in the summertime, we had a really hot summer just recently, and there would be one or two occasions where basically I'd spray it onto my head and then we'd be out in the sun and I would very slightly feel slight throbbing in my head. Um, but that was literally it. There's no other kind of side effects apart from, you know, you might want to put like a bad pillowcase or you know, an old one on the pillow that you sleep on because sometimes they can turn it yellow if you don't allow it to set in for long enough and stuff. I think they recommend that you spray it and then leave it for 30 minutes, presumably so it can kind of sink in before you then lie on your back or your side so that, you know, it can kind of absorb into the scalp and all the rest of it and hopefully not stain your pillows. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the only real, uh, real negative that I could kind of say about Regain Foam itself. Um, I'd say it's probably, uh, you know, it's, it's clinically proven. So it's something that you should incorporate into your, uh, your hair loss routine, if obviously that's something that you're kind of interested in. Um, but yeah, I'd say that on, on balance of all of the different versions of the product that I've tried and stuff, is definitely the both the most effective and the most uh, you know it's the easiest basically to incorporate into your lifestyle so that you can use it on a regular basis you know twice a day um, and you're not going to really see any side effects from it. Um, the only time you might feel a slight side effect is if actually you don't take it. 
So from time to time, if I kind of miss it, or if I say like, I have a shower in the morning, I don't want to put it on afterwards because obviously it's all like flans your head and stuff. Um, you know, hair on your head, that is. <laughs> you don't get a flat head. Um, but yeah, like if I don't put it on after that and stuff, um, then, you know, later in the day, you get like a mild tingling sensation and maybe like a tiny bit of itching and stuff. But that subsides very quickly. Um, you know, it's not something that's going to kind of really ruin your day and stuff. Um, so like I said, that's what I'm taking at this moment in time. Um, I've contacted the clinic that I'm going to get my hair transplant through and stuff. And they've actually told me that I should stop taking it or stop using it um, at least 10 days before the actual procedure itself. And that you need to wait at least 15 days after the procedure in order for you to resume use of it. But I mean, the only real reason obviously to use it after you've had a hair transplant is to maybe speed up the process of the new hair growth. But I mean, the reason that you're having a hair transplant is that you literally don't have to use these products anymore. That's the whole point, right? Otherwise, why would you bother taking, uh, why would you bother having one and stuff if you're still stuck with taking all these products all the time, you know? Anyway, so like I said, that's my experience of taking minoxidil. Um, if there's any questions that anyone has at all, feel free to ask me and leave them in the comments below. Um, and I look forward to seeing you very soon.